Oh, hello there. Good morning. Um, I bet before you took this class, no one told you that you were going to be breaking the space-time continuum. Um, here I am. It is 6.19 a.m. And I have used what are called deformers to deform uh, these primitive 3D objects. So let me show you how to do that. Um, in the end, you'll be creating five different objects with five different deformations. Um, this one is probably my favorite. So this is the melt, by the way. You'll have to discover that one on your own. I'm going to show you how to get started and do a few of these, or maybe all of them. We'll see how long this takes and how I'm feeling, and I'm just going to kind of free wheel this guy. Um, so let's get started. You should have already downloaded a file off Google Classroom. I think I have. Yes, it's called deformers.c4d. And if you're having a hard time opening it, um, if it doesn't open right away when you click on it in the downloads folder, you can always go to the file menu and choose open. Um, since I already have that file open, I can find that in my window menu here. So I'm going to go to window and choose this deformers here. So this is what we're all starting with. Um, yeah, we're going to make an animation with this. So, uh, let's start with the cube here. Um, you see here in the object manager, we have a cube. Um, we're going to add something to this, a deformer. And I'm going to use the twist deformer. Um, currently, we're looking at this little purple bendy thing. This is actually a bend. And like some of these other menus up here, if you want to access more of the options, you hold, click and hold on the menu. And I'm going to choose twist. And that puts a, you know, I'm going to try and use my Wacom tablet for this. Uh, let me see if this works. I'm feeling a little more confident with this thing. Um, so yes, I have a twist deformer and a cube object. So the first thing we have to do is kind of tell these two to hook up. Um, and we're going to do that by creating a parent-child relationship. So what I'm going to do is take this twist and drop it on top of the cube until I see a down arrow. Boom. Uh, that is how it should look. Twist should not be on top, and cube should not be down here indented. Uh, your object should be this. Your deformer should be this. Um, you'll also notice that you, you know, we have this little wireframe thing. Um, I like to imagine this as a deforming saran wrap, like a magical saran wrap. Um, it is within this area that these deformations are going to happen. Um, and depending on the deformer, you want to have this thing kind of wrap your object perfectly. And we have that ability because these two have this parent-child relationship. Um, we can say fit to parent. And I'm only going to see this if I'm on my twist object. So you have to select twist. And I'll say fit to parent. Like so. Um, awesome. So that's it. Um, but ZBarth, it's not twisted. So yes, uh, usually the controls for the deformations are under the deformation itself, the deformer. Um, so when I click on twist, I see this option for angle. And that's really all I need to do. I'm going to drag angle up and you'll see it twist. Kind of fun. Okay, but something weird is happening. And you'll notice when I get to like, let's see how many degrees I'm at right here, 50 degrees. So at 50 degrees, you can see that there's a gap between what the deformer is trying to do and what it's actually doing to the cube. And there is a good reason for that. The reason is that uh, we don't have enough segments to deform it in the way that it's trying to. So we need to chop up our cube into more uh, a Rubik's-y type thing. And you should remember that we can do that under our object. So I'm going to click on the cube, and then I'll come down here and uh, turn up the segments. And I don't think I have shading on. I don't. Um, so we have to display the segments if we really want to see it, how it works. So I'm going to go up to here to display and choose Grod Shading with Lines. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to increase the size, or the sides, I guess, these segments. To like four each, maybe eight, maybe six. It gets to a point where you really don't need to add any more. Uh, the more segments you have, the the more polygons you have, and the longer it will take to render later. And because we're doing an animation, uh, this render is technically going to take 90 times longer because it's going to render 90 frames, not just one picture. So, 
Um, awesome. This is looking cool so far. And you know, to be safe and because what I'm used to is eight segments, I'm going to keep it at eight segments. All right. Awesome. Um, so now let's animate this thing. Let's go back to the twist. And what is it we want to animate? We want to animate the angle, right? So we want this this number here to change over time. So maybe the animation is going to start at zero degree. And then it's going to like twist. It's going to crack its back. And then it's going to come back to like zero percent. OK, so let's do that. I will zero out this angle first. So I'm going to type in zero. And um, what's so awesome about Sim 4D is how easy it is to animate. Um, and I'm going to start doing that right now. So the first step is to check this little radial box. That will be uh, creating a keyframe for us at the very beginning of our timeline. We have a timeline here. It's a 90 frame timeline. If I hit play, uh, it will loop over and over again. And you can see the counter right here, and it loops from 0 to 90. And we just so happen to have a, I'm going to go to the very beginning, keyframe at the very beginning telling Cinema 4D to use a zero degree angle at the very beginning of this animation. Now I'm going to take my playhead, this little green guy here, and drag it over to the 40th frame, frame 40. Here is where I'm going to turn up the angle to wherever I was, whatever I liked before, maybe something like that. So about 90-ish degrees. Uh, exactitude does not matter. So now that I've changed this, you'll notice that that little keyframe thing changed from red to a hollow yellow. Uh, I now have to create a second keyframe here. So the first keyframe is told, hey, that needs to be at zero degrees. Now at this keyframe, it needs to be at uh, 93 degrees. So I'm going to now check this box. So after making changes, you always have to check that little radial box uh, in order to create the keyframe. And you can simply test it by hitting play. And we'll see. Boom. That's cool. Um, the only problem is that it doesn't loop, but it is twisting its back. It does kind of crack its back right there. And then, boom, it kind of snaps back. So we're going to fix that snap back by making two more keyframes. So you're going to create five objects, and you're going to animate them all. And you're going to use four keyframes on each object. So once you do one or two of these, you should kind of get the hang of this. Um, now I'm going to scoot my playhead to the 50th frame and I am going to just tap the radial box at 93 degrees. And what that does is it tells it, uh, it gives it a keyframe at 93 degrees here and then another here at 93 degrees. So that has the effect of not moving at all. So now we have told it to rotate or twist and then stop twisting up until this point. Now we're going to have it start twisting here. So it's told it's going to start at 93, and then we're going to go back to 0. I can drag down on those arrows or type the number here. OK. And let's see, where is my cursor? There it is. Um, and then finally, again, I have this yellow hollow circle. I'm going to tap that, and that creates a keyframe. So I have four keyframes now. You see those little blue things? And now when I hit play, it starts, cracks its back, and then it returns to normal, and that is looping awesomely. Um, that's it. So we just animated some 3D stuff. Uh, give yourself a pat on the back, crack your back. Um, but actually, don't do that. It's a terrible, terrible habit. Uh, now I'm going to take my cube and move it out of the way, because we're going to make another object, and it's going to be born here in this zero coordinate. So before I do that, I might as well just move this thing. So. Um, if you didn't select cube and you tried to move something, look, it would actually move the twist. You see that? So you could see what happens when you don't fit something to a parent. Um, and you might want to do that, but yeah. Uh, we actually just want to move the whole thing. So we're going to select the parent, and that will move both the object and the thing itself, the deformer. OK, let's do another one. Let's do, um, I'm going to click and hold on my uh, primitive objects and select a platonic this time. And with the platonic, um, you can see I, I can see my segments. So I'm already going to turn these up because what we're going to do here is make this thing explode. And the more segments I have, the more it will explode. The more pieces will explode. The more pieces of shrapnel will be created. OK, so I've got my primitive shape. Now I'm going to need to add my deformer and do the parent-child relationship. So we're going to click and hold. 
And this time I'm going to choose the round bomb explosion. Not the TNT over here. Not explosion effects, but explosion. Okay, from there I'm going to drag the explosion onto the shape. So platonic is the parent, explosion is the child. And it's so fun. This I love this thing. Okay, so I'm going to grab, uh, I'm getting excited here. Let's grab explosion. And watch what happens when I turn up the strength. Boom! So, yeah, you can have it explode up to 100%. Everything disappears. Um, and there's all these other little options here that you can play around with. Um, but let's just get this animated. So now that I've kind of seen, I've previewed my animation by clicking and dragging on the strength option of the explosion. Um, but now I am going to actually animate this. So let me go back to the beginning of my animation. So we're at the very beginning of my timeline. Notice you can't see those blue keyframes because those are on the cube. Uh, or I guess it's on the twist. Yeah, it's on the twist. So I'm going to go back to my explosion. Um, we're at the very beginning of the animation. And I'm going to start this off at 0% strength. So I'll just make the keyframe. Boom. It's red. It's done. We're going to use the same timing. So I'm going to drag my playhead to the 40th frame. And I'm going to turn the strength of this up to, uh, I don't know, maybe just there. That's kind of fun. And we'll have it freeze there. So I've changed the value. It's now asking me, make the keyframe. So you got to be red and solid. Now I'll scoot over to the 50th keyframe, or the 50th frame. I'm going to create a new keyframe there at the same value. So I just check that. And then... Um, We'll have it shrink back down to 0% at the very end here. So I'm going to take my strength, and I could make it bigger if I wanted to, or just back down to 0. And that. So you can end this however you want to, but I want everything looping. Um, I want it to seamlessly loop like this one is doing. Notice that it returns to the same state it was at the very beginning. So fun, 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 fun. Two down, three to go. Okay. Pause. I'm going to take my platonic and drag that off to the side here. Very cool. Um, next, let's make a new shape. So you, you know, you can watch this or not watch this. Uh, no big deal. You can skip to the end if you want to see how to render this. But you do need to add materials and things like that too. So um, we're just watch. Let's do the capsule. Capsule's fun. Capsule's already nice and segmented. Um, and this time I'm going to use a deformer that will be, um, let's do displacer, it's fun. There's one extra step we have to do for displacer. Okay, so if you're feeling adventurous, do this. Create the parent-child relationship. So we're going to drag the displacer onto the capsule. Um, and now for the controls of the displacer, I might as well just go to my beginning here. And under displacer, I'm gonna click on shading. You have to give it some. Sh you, have to, you have to throw some shade at the displacer. Okay. Um, so the first option is just noise, and it's gonna use this little shady thing to create this noise, this visual noise, this textural noise, I guess. Um, and now I'll go back to my object tab. So this is all under the displacer option here. Um, first, I turn on shading. And now under object, I can turn up and down the strength. So look at that. You can, this is really cool, like, pulsing. Yeah, weird. Fun. Weird and fun. So we're going to have it go from... I'm actually going to start it at negative 150. Okay. So at the very beginning, look, I'm at the zero frame. And now I will hit the strength keyframe here. We are then going to scoot this to the 40th frame. And I'm going to turn this way up to like plus 150. Okay. And create the keyframe. Tap. And go over to the 50th frame and let that have another keyframe. So it sits there, right? So, it's, so look, it's moving and then it's going to freeze for a second like it got caught. And then we'll go to the very end, and I'm going to turn that original value back down to negative 150. And it should seamlessly loop now. So, Oh, don't forget, hit the keyframe. 
Very cool. Very cool. Very cool. Okay, show your friends. Click capsule. I'm going to move this guy off to the side. And the last I'm going to show you is the Spherify, and we're going to use a figure with that. And I'm going to make this guy's head really big. So I'm going to grab figure, and we'll make our deformer. This time is a Spherify. So the fifth one you're going to have to figure out on your own. Um, but choose a melt. Melt is fun. We'll do Spherify. This one I'm not going to fit to parent. Um, let me drag this onto that. Because I'm specifically wanting to impact just the head portion of this. So here's an example of why you might not want to fit to parent. You know, maybe you got this funny idea for a cartoon and you want this guy's head to, you know, blow up like a balloon before it explodes, right? Ooh, actually that is so fun. Wow, okay. So this is one thing that you could animate is actually the position of the Spherify. Um, but for this, I'm just going to bring it up here. There we go. And I'm going to create a, we're going to go to the beginning. And I'm going to create a keyframe. And I'll turn it down to zero here. There we go. we go to the 40th frame. Oops, I'll get that there. There we go, 40th frame. Um, yeah, I wanted it at 50, so I'm going to keyframe that. I guess it remembered that. No, I need to come back here, turn this down to zero. So every once in a while, you'll forget to click on something. I'm not even sure what I did there. No biggie. Uh, now I'm going to drag to the 50th frame, make the third keyframe so that it just sits there for a second. There's no change here between the 40th and 50th frame. And then at the end, I'm going to check that box and turn the value back down. And I did the wrong order, so I need to check the box again. So remember, you're making the keyframe last. That's the last step. And we'll test this animation. Cool. I'm going to move this up. Whoa. Nope. Remove the wrong thing. Control Z to undo. You might want to stop. Grab the figure. Because it's the biggest thing, I probably want to put this guy in the back. You know, so move your elements around. Um, make a composition. You're going to have to add materials to this as well. Um, materials are very, very simple. So here's how you. We're going to start finishing it after you are make, done making your animation. We'll make a new material. And you can use, remember, the eyedropper to grab colors. And I'll just grab this little orange color here. And once you have your material, you just drop it directly onto the thing. You can hit the render button to see how it will preview. So eh, this doesn't look so hot. Maybe you want to add a light. Right. Drag it up. Um, also, what else can we add besides lights and materials? We can look in our content browser and double click on presets, double click on visualize, double click on materials, and you know, I'll drop like a ceramic porcelain Chinese. Oh, yeah, we're gonna destroy this porcelain um, vase here. So now we'll use that material. I, you know, it, the fun just never stops. Um, Let's render this. Um, luckily for you, if you have downloaded this file from Google Classroom, I have already changed the render settings for you. Um, so it's really easy to just go into the render menu, say add to render queue. It's gonna ask you to save, say yes. And look, it's telling me this is gonna zero out of 91 frames. So when I hit play, we'll see this get rendered. and It'll take a little while. Yours should take longer because you should have a couple lights and you should at least have one more object animating and uh, more materials applied. But I wanted to keep this video short for you. And um, I hope you enjoyed. I'm now remembering that I had a video camera on me the whole time. That's kind of funny too for me. So uh, yeah, good luck with that. And raise your hand uh, when you have a problem. And I'm going to stop this by doing function and F10.